Oh, here we go. The girlies are back in action. (laughs) (laughs) I am sitting with my dear, beautiful friend, Heather McMahon. We have a public understanding that... You know, we're real friends. We don't exploit and extort each other. We do not. For the content. (laughs) Um, We have plenty of conversations that would get us both canceled. Mm -hmm. And a couple group chats with a few pictures that would definitely get us canceled. But last night I texted you a Hail Mary. And I said, Heather, it's your time. I'm pulling the fucking pity card. (laughs) I need you to carry me to shore on a podcast this week. And you said, you betcha. Gladly. It, I, I, it is never a pity call. I will, whenever you wave that white flag, I will come. I will come I and was... bring hot fire content to your platform. <laughs> I said that I was saving it. I didn't utilize it during pregnancy. Yeah. My whole pregnancy, I thought, oh, I should batch some episodes. Maybe I'll call that bitch Heather. Mm-hmm. Didn't do it to you. I helped you out on the Before my wedding. of your wedding. You did. You called me, you said, I need a fucking episode. This is the thing. This is what people don't understand about podcasting. It is, it is an ask to ask another podcaster to come on your show because essentially you're asking them to pick up 50% of the workload. Yes. And can I I'm going to ask 75 from you today. I can give you, I can honestly give you probably 85. I've got it. I I gave a lot of blood today at the doctor's office. So I should be only giving you about 15 because I'm weak. But I kind of feel like I got it. I know the eclipse is coming. I kind of got a little zip. I'm ready to go. Could you explain to me what Mm -hmm. an eclipse is? It's basically where the moon covers the sun. So that is why the sky goes black. Now, in the last eclipse, I was up in Highlands, North Carolina, because it was one of the like the lines of like totality. So I was standing outside on a golf course. What are you, an astronomer? (laughs) Shut up. You're so fucking embarrassing. I was on the lines of vitality. (laughs) What were you on the lines of? I believe it's called the the lines of totality. (laughs) Listen, I just find it kind of interesting. I think the solar system is very interesting. Like, my husband has no desire to ever go to outer space. I would totally be into outer space. I I was the whistleblower on the aliens way before everybody else. That is 100% true. I will give you that. (laughs) I do think I was abducted by an alien. I believe we've discussed this. Um, That's a separate story. It's weird to me that you're so into this. So is it going to go dark today? Well, we, you are not in a line of, you are not, you're not going to see it. It will get darker. Like I'm in Georgia right now, so it'll get like shady, but it, but unless you're, I think, and you got to be in Maine, somewhere in Tennessee and then somewhere in Texas, we're not in the, the main line. It already so got it's dark. Basically, okay. I don't yeah. care. It's basically the same thing as like when a fucking cloud covers the sun for no, a few seconds. No, essentially it's the upside down. So the animals for like it's really wild. So at the last eclipse I was like it went fully dark and then all the animals that come out at night came out for like well, it was like 2 minutes and they start making noises cuz all the nocturnal animals come out and and it's like the upside down. It's really wild. Oh my god, so I got to lock up Richard because I live yeah. in a motherfucking zoo. <laughs> no, literally the owls, the mountain lions, <laughs> the hawks, Hawks aren't nocturnal. The fucking coyotes. Yeah, you gotta you gotta lock up Richie baby. Because my um my dogs are at doggy daycare right now because I can't do anything in the house with them. Um, and Jeff was panicked. He's like, should I go pick up the dogs before doggy daycare? And I said, no, just let them stay indoors. They'll be safe. He literally, my husband literally said this morning, what if macaroni is outside and she looks at the sun? And I'm like, the dog's Wait, not gonna but- go blind. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm confused about. Because if you look at the sun, but it's covered by the moon, who cares? Yes, it's but dark. Appear- it's it is not dark. Blind you, but if you you're not supposed to look directly at it because it will blind you. Don't ask. Is, I don't know that I'm, much. Honestly, I have realized that I am someone that really my guiding compass and my life lifestyle is that uh-huh. ignorance is bliss, and I just like don't need to know about things that don't personally affect me. <laughs> Well, technically, Jackie, Jacqueline. I believe that's called narcissism <laughs> yeah. and a personality disorder. Uh, technically, the eclipse is affecting everyone because you, you, um, we all revolve around the sun. But I love that you are just choosing to keep your head in the sand today. I think that's a beautiful thing. But also, I am. we're surviving, period. You're a new mother. You know what I mean? I am um, a world-class artist. So we're also doing a lot to try and just survive day to day. 
We bleed out for the craft, especially <laughs> you. I always say this. You just work too hard for me, and it's, like, annoying, and it just puts a burden on, on our friendship. Do you love that I said you're, you're, a, you're a mom, and I said that I was a world-class artist? <laughs> <laughs> I did catch that. Mm -hmm. I will say that I do have, of course, at least 500 men in my house because now I'm replacing the remainder of the windows. We're going steel. We're going sexy. Yes. I can't fucking stop. And they're in my back office, my tiger room that I kind of low-key copied your house because you have this fabulous martini room. So Mm -hmm. I wanted the same, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, Single white female energy. And Max made this amazing pregnancy photo of me. He took my pregnancy photo where I'm basically half naked. Yeah. And he made it into a Marlboro Lights cigarette campaign. Oh, yeah. Of me, like, holding a cigarette, the box, whatever, and it's framed back there. And one of the gentlemen came up to me. His name is Jose. Shout out, Jose. And he said, Jackie, um, are you a model? And I said... You're like, uh, yeah, Jose, I sure am. I said, some people might say that. Yeah, maybe I am a model. I'm a mother, I'm a model, and I'm on the front lines of grief. I just don't know how to do the thing where I don't tell everybody the truth. So I'm just yeah. going to be honest. Me and okay. Heather discussed this. I was like, maybe I shouldn't say anything. Uh, my mother-in-law passed this weekend, so we are in, yet again, another trauma bender at the Schimmel hyphen Haas household. <laughs> We've got one remaining parent left between the two of us. Heather. I'm, I'm not trying to laugh because my, my heart goes out to Andrew. But I, it's like, no, of course, it's like the worst <laughs> thing in the entire world. But I feel like I had to have you on because yeah. the origin of our friendship is our dead really parents. Is our dead parents. We met around the same time right after our parents died. My mom, your dad. We yes. trauma bonded at an influencer retreat, you know, and this is where we're at today. It is really fucked up that initially, like, you hear somebody dies and I immediately go to giggle, but that is the only physical response that my body knows how to handle. It's like, oh, here we go. Like, buckle up. Like, like I can't fucking believe it. Like, I'm so desensitized, and I know that you can relate to this. This is what I was saying to Andrew last night. I'm like, this is so fucked up because we are in our happy era right now Yeah, as a... As an isolated family unit, me, Andrew, Clyde, and the only thing that fucks up my life is external factors. In the privacy and the confines of my intimate, like, private relationship, my marriage, my baby, everything is so protected and happy and safe, and then you get fucking gang-banged by life. Yeah, I, I, tr- that is why it's really hard for me sometimes, like, really enjoy joyful moments because I mm-hmm. constantly had that cynicism in the back of my brain, like, somebody's gonna die. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's so What's up. around the bend? <laughs> See, Andrew is more like that. Whereas I've really been deep diving, psychoanalyzing myself the past mm-hmm. 24 and hours. And what have you learned? Because, not much, but <laughs> I, I have to force myself out of my own body to watch my behavior in moments like this because I need to make sure that I'm not being a sociopath because I'm such a regimen like compartmentalizer that I don't I kind of like cosplay grieving because Mm -hmm. I want to protect myself and my vortex I hear you. That, then that's all self preservation. I think anybody right. would look at that and just say, "All right, you're you're in you're you're not in a you're just in like mommy mode. You're just literally trying to protect Andrew." Too. You know me, Mama Bear. <laughs> that's me. This is not a really good angle for me. I should have chiseled the jaw a little bit. It's not Jackie. Good. This is not. A, first of all, we are both whitewashed. I even have a light on. What's I have, going on? I need we a look li- terrible. We look literally so terrible. And this morning, I had to go give just pints of blood to my. My natro, my naturopath, and literally, I came home and Jeff's like, "Do you need a cookie?" Like you, and I'm like, "Jeff, I stopped for breakfast on the way home. I look so unwell, but can I tell you, I'm gonna get my neck done. I don't know when, I, but I've got to get I, my can neck I come done. with you? Let's get yes. a twofer. You don't. What, what are you gonna get done? I I want everything done. Okay? I want it I want to get weird and creative with mm-hmm. my aesthetic. I this is what I appreciate about us. Um, a lot of these bitches roll through on you know on video podcasts. Mm-hmm. 
And they're in a full glam with a strip lash and a goddamn, like, a clip-in and a wind machine. And we're not doing that today or ever. No, I don't have time. Um, I mean, and again, I have two modes. It's troll underneath the bridge that's telling you riddles for, in order for you to pass or full glam. I'm on stage at Radio City. There is no like I don't have a casual day to day look. There is none of that. I don't know how to muster up the energy to like go to Costco with makeup on. I don't know how to do that. No, I don't really either. I'm very into um, just like a legging and like a, a baggy jean with a sneaker, but I'm never popping full glam ever. No, and I, I, I get sucked into these vortexes of these young gals doing these makeup tutorials on Instagram or TikTok, and I'll watch it for hours, and I'm like, I have the same products. I know how to beat a face, but I was a theater kid, so like, I do my own makeup before my shows, but I know how to like make you look like, eight, like if you want to do old age makeup, like I can make you look 85. I don't know how to make you look like a young, youthful Gen Z or though, you know? <laughs> You're not doing like fresh face, uh, what is it called, clean girl aesthetic. We no. are going like full tranny. Full trade, yeah, and like full, like if you want to look like an eighty yeah. year old with like crow's nest, I can go in and do do those kind of shadowing, like little and like makeup filler. By the yeah. way, don't try to cancel us for the tranny thing. Uh, I don't know if you know this. Last week, I hard launched the rebrand of the casual use of the word retarded, and it happened oh, nice. to be Autism Awareness Day on <laughs> the day that I put that episode out, and I just want everyone to know. Where, as Taylor Swift exists, you know, with the Easter eggs and the curation, whatever the opposite is of that is my journey. Like, that was not planned. People are like, that's so genius. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm a dumb fuck, okay? (laughs) That was not, by the way, I would never. That's so fucking terrible. It just, you know, destiny, call Mm -hmm. it, um, manifestation. I'm not sure. I just wanted to get that out of the way. Back to my trauma really quick. Yeah. Um. I just would like to say this publicly. You probably already know this. The day of my mother's funeral, Heather, mm-hmm. this is part of my psychoanalysis. We've really been on I a for- journey today, and I'm so <laughs> buckled in. I am dialed into this it's, journey. Well, it's been 12 <laughs> minutes. Okay. I, t- I told you, I only need you for 42. I'm, I'm, I'm dialed I'll- in. Listen, Cut you in, loose. in about 42 minutes, the sun is going to go black anyway, so we're either all going to die or I'll just fall asleep. So this is great. Yeah, when, wait, when is the eclipse? Are we going to well, be together? Gonna, no, it's going to literally hit me in 42 minutes, so this is perfect. Just as okay, soon so as we're I just... go black, just know that the eclipse has happened and I've been taken up to, to be with the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> we are sisters in Christ. We Don't are forget sisters it. in Christ. Never forget. Listen. I may be terrible at starting new healthy habits, but I found that even if I can't hit all of my health goals, I can certainly force my dog to, and that feels almost just as good. The Farmer's Dog makes feeding real healthy dog food easy and convenient, and your dog will absolutely love it. We switched Leo and Richard over to the Farmer's Dog years ago, and I can't tell you the worlds of difference. It honestly feels like Leo has a new lease on life, okay? He's like a new dog. His coat is shinier. His breath is better. His digestive system is rocking, okay? And um, honestly, I couldn't recommend it more for any dog at any life stage. The Farmer's Dog makes and delivers fresh, healthy dog food right to your door. It is developed by vets, nutritionally balanced, and made from real meat and veggies to the safety standards of human food. So, you know, if you've ever uh, had the freaky little urge to try your pet's food, now's your chance, okay? Plus, they send the pre-portioned dog food specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs. So it's so easy to help your dog maintain their ideal weight. And dogs at a healthy weight can live up to two and a half years longer. Get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash Bible. Plus, you're going to get free shipping. Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash Bible to get 50% off. That is thefarmersdog.com slash Bible. I love anything custom, okay? A custom window, a custom blanket, a custom sheet, perhaps an embroidered linen. You know me. Are you skeptical about custom beauty? Listen, I get it. My feed gets flooded with customize this and personalize that, all promising to fix my damaged ends, my fine lines, blah, blah, blah. But when pros says custom, they actually mean it. 
Okay. Each and every bottle of Pro's custom hair and skincare is made to order and personalized with a unique blend of naturally powerful and proven effective ingredients to meet your needs. Their in depth consultation analyzes over 80 factors for a complete view of your life and beauty goals. They ask me about my diet, my exercise, my stress levels. They even ask me about my zip code to understand how the water hardness, the UV index, and the dry desert LA air. LA air oxygen, you name it, could be impacting my hair and skin health. Okay. They do not miss a beat. Next, they recommend a full routine of truly personalized products, which were only produced after I placed my order. There is nothing premixed. This is a big deal, guys. Nothing off the shelf. Since I switched to pros, I have noticed that my hair is so much shinier, so much less frizzy. It's fuller, it's stronger. This is amazing, honestly. Like, I could not sing their praises enough. In a third-party, double-blind, dermatologist-supervised, controlled clinical study, aka the gold standard in research studies, pros proved that the personalization works better than off-the-shelf alternatives. So you can try it for yourself, get your healthiest hair in 30 days or your money back. Pros is so confident that you're going to love their results. They are offering my listeners an exclusive trial offer so you can see the difference custom care can make. 50% off your first subscription order at pros.com slash Bible. That is P-R-O-S-E dot com slash Bible for your free consultation and 50% off your one-of-a-kind formulas. Pros.com slash Bible. Okay. On the day of my mother's funeral. Yes. I went, this is, this is what we're dealing with here. Okay. I went to the Sunset Boulevard, West Hollywood dry bar. For a beachy wave. Yeah. Because that's, <laughs> ha- that's what mommy wanted. And I, I didn't tell my family where I was going. I said I was just going to go pick up some coffees or something. I went down to the dry bar, okay? And, you know, the Jews, they get it over with quick. Right. Like, you got you to gotta bust the funy in two or three days. You have no time to process, grieve, think about your life, their life, reflection, none of that. They're like... Do you want a deli platter? You, are you doing the smoked salmon with the herring and the white fish? Are we going pastrami? The, the fact that they serve cold cuts at these funerals, these Jewish fucking funerals, is so disgusting. Yeah, it's not really appetizing. You're standing next to a cold body. You know what I don't want? A slice of deli ham. Or, you know, if you're kosher, slice of deli turkey. Like, I'm good. Like, And then the person that's, like, partaking too much in the pickled herring, like, yeah. they, they got to go <laughs> because they're just there for the free fucking lunch. It's disgusting. Anyways, I go down to the dry bar. I'm like, I'd like like a straight top, like straight ends, which is like a really effortless wave, you know, like make sure you really like hit it with the heating iron. They're like, so um, what's the occasion? You know, they always ask you like, it's a Tuesday. It's 8 a.m. Where are you going? You got a fun, fun night out with the girls? He said, no, just just because. And I'm just chatting it up with this fucking yeah. hairdresser that I've never met. I just wanted to cosplay normalcy. Can I tell while you? While dying I, inside. I have gotten into conversations before where you start when they're like, oh, tell me about your parents. Are your parents still together? Like with a total stranger. And I'm so yeah. far into the conversation where I can't then drop the bomb because I didn't let them know early enough on that my dad is dead. And I just right. keep co- having the conversation as if he is alive and running a mortgage business. Like I cannot, I just don't have the energy to explain it's that he is dead. It's easier. It's just easier. It's so much easier. I yep. had this terrible situation with my mom's old nail woman. Does she still think your mom's eight years? alive? No, this is the worst part. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> she thought my grandma Gloria, who you've met, who yeah, is love, a love her. full emotional terrorist, okay? Mm-hmm. She was in a rehab center. She just moved back to her house three days okay. ago. God I've bless. already had to go over there 16 times. She has her outlet mall Montclair jacket with the fox trim mm-hmm. that was being moved from the rehab facility back into her closet. And we had a handyman there helping her and like installing bars and stuff. And he had his hands on the, on the fur perimeter of her discount Montclair. And she goes, 
Jackie, Jack, tell, put it, tell him to stop touching it. I'm like, he's not deaf. I'm not deaf. The man is helping you move your, your, your one, you know, luxury puffer jacket. Like, just say thank you and shut the fuck up. Like, yeah. you can't walk right now. Like, you're also half dead. The Montclair jacket, like, will bury you in it. Like, let the, let the sweet man move your fucking things. She was worried about him touching her jacket. Side story. She made me take her to the nail place. I'm, I'm like really on. I'm really. I on love one it today. I, I'm in it. I'm here. I'm, I, I'm buckled in. <laughs> I feel like I took meth. I'm sorry. Um, so she made me before Ashley's wedding take her to the nail place that my mom used to take her to. Right. And I was like, Grandma, can we please go anywhere else? Like, I'll take you to my woman. No, Jack. It's just easier. It's easier. So I walk in with Gloria, and Cindy, the nail woman, goes, "Critty." Where you been? Critty thinks I'm my mother, which is so fucking rude. Oh god. Because and what did you I'm do? like, did do you... I look like a fifty nine year old woman, bitch? Did you just pretend to be your mom? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sure did. Yep. Sure did. <laughs> and the whole Lena. time Gloria's like, Jack, I want Fiji. Where's the Fiji, Jack? <laughs> I, this doesn't look right. And then the other one's like, Critty, Critty. I'm like, I can't I gotta go. I got to go. <laughs> Gloria's like, I need funny bunny Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming at me. And I'm just like dying, dying. And I'm like, she's like, where have you been? I'm like, around. Like, I, I don't know how to do this right now. I'm pregnant. I can't. It's yeah. too much. I also love much. that you were visibly pregnant. And she was like, thought that you as a 59 year old woman were with child. Yeah. I'm like, Cindy, we got to get those eyes checked, okay? I know I'm not a goddamn beauty queen, <laughs> but the face, I got Botox right before I found out I was pregnant. So I was still like kind of fresh. I'll never forget the text that I had to send out to my dad's masseuse. She, <laughs> out of all of the people who ended up like really mourning and grieving my father's l l like passing, yeah. his masseuse did not take it well. She texted my dad's phone and was like, hey, Kyle, want to see if you want to, you know, meet up for our regular Tuesday. And she would come to the house like our whole family knew her. She would set up in the office. This woman rubbed everybody in our family. And I had a text from my dad's phone. Hey, girl, it's Heather. I'm so sorry. My dad suddenly passed of cancer. <laughs> she was distraught. She was so sad that she was never going to run her coconut oil lubed up fingers over my dad's voluptuous body. I, she didn't take it well. She was weeping at the funeral. And at some point you would have thought they would have had a sexual relationship. They didn't. Yeah. Like my dad was in, our, in the office getting rub, a rub down. And uh. I just remember my mom and I laughed so hard. We were like, why is this woman? So distraught, like less distraught than I was. And I loved my dad, but she did not take it well. That masseuse did not. There's take it well. nothing worse than like that lone, like peripheral, like person that's just yeah. like <laughs> in shambles. <laughs> and then you have to be the pillar of support. And you're like, wait a fuck. Like you barely knew them. So at our country club, and this is such a white woman first world problem, but the, one yeah, of our valets, our valet bring guy, it. Mike, who is the best, he's been there forever. But I avoid going in the front of the building. I park on the mm -hmm. side. I go through the women's locker room because every yeah. time I see him, he brings up my dad and I can't do it. And Jeff's like, you at, like I've hidden in the bushes before. I'm like, God damn it. Mike's moving cars. I got to like, I will take other cars. I will rent a yeah. car just to go next door to the country club because I cannot get cornered into a conversation about my dad because you know when you lose somebody you're like today it's wednesday it's 4 p.m i just want to go uh, get a white wine i don't want to bring up the trauma that i bury so deep down inside every goddamn shoving day. it down Shove Give it. me off chance that you're just having a gay a day. Old time yeah a day okay can you just just let it ride let yeah it ride you know and what i mean on a serious note, it is wild when someone dies because then you do realize all the other people in, again, your peripheral orbit that that person affected. But there were days where it's like, it's the masseuse, it's the valet, it's the auto mechanic. Who's next? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the Waffle House staff had a meltdown and I'm like, oh, guys, I, I just got to make it through today. Please don't cry on my shoulder. I can't handle Please. it. Please lock yeah. it up. Lock it up. Um, Sharp right. Yeah. Let's talk about Jojo Siwa. Okay. Wow, I'm so glad that you brought this up. I, I have been on such a deep dive on TikTok 
about it. Yes. I have watched clinical psychologists try and figure it out. I've watched professional other dancers and performers break down what's going on. It is so intense. It is okay. so... I feel it like is, she is acting oh, like she's doing a rebranding, A, that nobody asked for, and B, that's already been done. Like, like you're not the, the first best person part. to she's do like, this. I'm starting a new genre, gay pop. It's like, um, <laughs> bitch, where you been? <laughs> pop did you, is gay. Did you it's see the when, when Tegan and Sarah, they, re, they, re, they splice it and they were like, what? this just shows that you're young and have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. Okay, yes. I will say... So I did have a moment of clarity because when Jojo Siwa was doing her interview in these exact glasses, yeah. who else in the world bought these disgusting Gucci glasses for an obscene <laughs> amount of money? Your girl. <laughs> I have them. I'm burning them. They're going to the real Wait, real. Let's, let's both do the rest of this interview in glasses. I, these are okay. some I found at the dollar store. Continue. Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. Um, so I was talking to Max because mm. obviously like the world – is ablaze with Jojo Siwa. The dancing, the music video, the merman factor of it all, which is like the Loch Ness, Scissor Sister Monster. I don't know Mm -hmm. what the fuck's going on, okay? The interviews, the this, the lip, the Tesla wrapped in a collage of herself, which, by the way, we are one month away from both doing. Yes. I know you're ready to wrap that Jetta. I, I, we sold the Jetta and I've never been so upset when I, we sold it and I got Jeff. In when fra- we sold the Jetta a couple months ago and, oh my um, God, Heather, I'm so yeah, sorry I know. for your loss. I'm so upset about it. And I, cause I had to get Jeff his, uh, frat daddy car. He now has a Z 71 Tahoe to drive to our does. second country club that we joined. Cause that's how I've been bamboozled in my marriage, but continue. Yes. Uh, there are no words. We're going to talk about your marriage in a second. Cause I want to bully Jeff. <laughs> Um, I'm not really able to bully Andrew today because it's yes. just too fresh and fragile. <laughs> I got us. <laughs> so, but man, do you want the... to? Mm. God. No days off. Honestly, it's coping. We're going to bully Jeff instead. But Can back I t- to the JoJo. <laughs> yes. Wait, hold on real quick. One of the biggest fights Jeff and I ever got into was this last anniversary of my dad's death Mm. he died on december 23rd we were driving around running errands and jeff was getting upset with me because i was add and i had a nervous breakdown in his brand new tahoe tahoe i just bought him and he said and i quote i know it's the anniversary of your dad's death but you don't have to be such a bitch today and do you know what i did jacqueline i got out of the I got out of a moving car at a stop sign <laughs> and I walked my happy ass down Peachtree Street and Jeff did not know what to do. He it like shocked him that he had crossed the line with me and I, I just that. he was like driving down the road being like get in the car and I was like I will not get in the fucking car and I got in an Uber and I took my my ass home and he said he he'd never been so scared in his life. Sorry, continue. Oh. No, no, no. By the way, mm-hmm. let that be a lesson to the ladies listening at, listening at home. Getting yeah. out of a moving car. I've only done it once, and I don't really remember why. We were, like, on our way to brunch somewhere, and I just had enough, and I needed some time. Yeah. Getting out of a moving car with your significant other will jilt Oof. them to their yes. core. <laughs> do it for no reason, and yeah. just see how much they love you. You really do it. I mean, again, be at a stop sign, but if you don't say anything and you just add a red light, you just get out of the car and you're walking down the side of the highway, mm-hmm. it they will be like, oh, that's it. This, I'm, I'm fucking dead. And, and it, say it, nothing. You don't need to scream. Nothing. No, you say nothing. You don't nothing. need to be like, you know what? You just to get on your phone, cool, calm, mm-hmm. and collected, deep, like very regiment breathing. Mm-hmm. Don't, you know, don't, no tears. No so tears. Stifle it down. Stifle you cannot down. show weakness. Mm-mm. Act like you're just like texting a friend and you don't even know that person and they're a predator. And yeah. keep walking. Yeah. Wow. And, th- and then wow. just disappear for an hour or two. But don't turn off your location so they can still track you on the phone. So they can see right. where you're going. But they need right. to know that you've had a mental breakdown and you're, t- you're possibly leaving them. That's what they need to think. And then do you go home and act as if nothing happened? That's what I would do. Oh, no. Or do you have words and closure? So about 20 minutes later, Jeff had must have called me 65 times in a row because I took a sharp right through a bush and he didn't know where I was. And um, I finally answered. I finally answered. And I said, what do you want? Very calmly. And he was like. And he Chills. started started off with boo boo, and he when he says like boo boo, he know, he's like trying to be sweet. He's like, I realized that what I said was so insensitive. You were being a little crazy today. 
I and it like immediately start backpedaling. And I just said, yeah. I don't have the the space right now to talk to you. I am so uh, deeply upset. So I will see you later today. And I show up at, right back at the house around 8 p.m. And I make him sweat. I make him oh, sweat. And if you God. can, if they do follow your location, you just stop. You drop a pin at the attorney's office. You drop a pin at the bank. So you make so them smart. think that you're, you're, you're moving money and, and doing legal paperwork. That is so smart. And, you know, yeah. something I've learned from you, <laughs> I think that you navigate your marriage pretty calmly for the most part. Mm-hmm. And even when you're angry, you stay calm. And I've really adapted that into my own life because I tend really? to be, I, I've tried to, because I actually find it to be so much more uh, terrifying yeah. than the screaming. That loses its luster. But if mm-hmm. you can really hold it together, cool, calm, and collected, you know what it's giving? It's giving detached. So they don't feel close to you mm-hmm. because if you're so controlled within your own body, it's silently sending a message that I'm untethering myself yeah. to you. <laughs> I know this is probably a huge shock to my listeners, but I'm a frequent wine drinker, okay? Baby likes the sauce. Give me a red, give me a white, give me a little rosé and a frosé. Forget about it. But I hate shopping for wine, okay? I just buy the same bottle over and over because it gets stuck in my wine vortex comfort zone, and I just don't want to waste money on something that I don't like, which is why I am obsessed with our next sponsor. It is Naked Wines. Naked Wines is a subscription service that connects you to the finest independent winemakers on the planet. So you're going to get a box of the market's best quality wines, however often you'd like for a fraction of the price you would normally pay in stores. If you use my code Bible for the code and password at nakedwines.com, you are going to get their incredible deal of six bottles for just $39.99. With a price like that, you're probably asking yourself, how does Naked Wines do it? Okay. Naked Wines connects winemakers and wine drinkers directly, allowing for vineyard to your door delivery at up to 60% off of what you would pay in store. So you can say goodbye to the middleman and hello to savings on hundreds of top quality award-winning wines to you without skimping on quality. They also have, you know, a cute little quiz that you can take that matches you with bottles that you love. Each shipment includes wines they recommend based on your previous ratings. So I just got my Naked Wines bottle of Matt Parrish Cabernet, and we are love, love, loving it, okay? Head over to nakedwines.com forward slash Bible. Once again, that is nakedwines.com forward slash Bible. Click enter voucher in the top right and put in Bible for both the code and the password. You're going to get six bottles of wine for just $39.99. That is shipping included. Okay. That is a hundred dollars off and less than $7 per bottle. This is amazing. I'm going to order a box myself. That is nakedwines.com forward slash Bible. Use the code and password Bible and grab six bottles for just $39. $39.99. One last time, that is nakedwines.com forward slash Bible, code and password Bible for $100 off your first six bottles. This episode of the Bitch Bible Podcast is also brought to you by Sonobello. Diet culture is out of control, okay, psychotic. There's always some new, finagled, battery-operated, vibrating weight loss pill that's going to trick your stomach into feeling full and make you nauseous or whatever the hell it is. But all of these crazy diets and weight loss schemes end up costing a fortune just for you to gain back all the weight in a few months. It's not sustainable. It does not make sense. Not the case with Sonabello, okay? Sonabello is the only way to permanently lose unwanted fat in inches. Sonabello doctors are masters in micro laser fat removal. Just try it for yourself. After one visit, you're going to notice the difference. Whether you've got, I'm projecting, stubborn tummy fat after pushing out a nine pound baby, thigh fat, arm fat, you can now get rid of it permanently. Sonabello's doctors are modern techni- use modern techniques to eliminate sagging, loose skin. There's no more feeling embarrassed, shy, and uncomfortable, okay? You're gorgeous. No more hiding in baggy clothes. Give yourself the gift of a full body reset with Sonabello. You deserve it. Schedule your free consultation and learn all about micro laser fat removal with Sonobello. And Sonobello is running a great special right now. Just visit sonobello.com slash Bible. That is Sono, B-E-L-L-O dot com slash Bible. When my husband knows the wheels are turning, that's when he gets nervous. Because 100%. 
And I only have blow ups like where I'm really vocal about twice a year where we're in the car and I will just be like, what the fuck? Because my totally. husband is so loud in Italian all the time. He right. And I tell him it's hard for me to understand, regulate his emotion because he bitches about everything. He's like, there's a bird in the sky. What the fuck? Like everything is at an <laughs> elevated tone, even when he's yeah. happy. So that's just him being New York Italian. So when I raise my voice, it's like, oh, this is it. This is over. The bags are packed. Right. I'm out the door. But 1, I, I but having the control day to day when I get quiet and he's like, "Are you going to react to that?" and I'm like, "No, I'm not because I I I'm a grown woman and I'm not here to play with little boys." And then he'll just be like, Oof. "What the fuck?" It's yeah. so detached. It's so ice cold. It's yep. so solo entity. It's mm-hmm. a solo entity energy yeah. that we should all be emulating in our marriage. Yes. Just go ice cold because that's the thing. Women nag. We bip, 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 bip. We yell at them all day. But when you just, it's so, nagging is so done. When you just get quiet and you leave the house and you're Mm -hmm. gone for 15 hours, they won't know Mm -hmm. what to do. How's Clyde? I hear him crying in the background. Do you hear him screaming his fucking head off? Yeah. He has an ear infection and I have a sinus infection. Uh, I took a pregnancy. him up. I took a, oh, I got blood I got blood work done today to see if I'm pregnant, but I don't think I am. Okay. I'll be your surrogate <laughs> if you want. I mean, honestly, I would put a baby in you in a heartbeat. But you know Jeff and I's baby's gonna be way too big. I don't want to rip you dip to tank. Clyde was almost nine pounds. Oh yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah. can I tell you? My mom randomly last night goes, I need you to tell Jackie. Clyde's growing on me. I like the name now. I said, okay, I'll tell her. I said, I'm going to see her tomorrow. I wanted to ask you <laughs> if she came around to it because I did tell Robin my baby name when I was pregnant. I think I was like five months pregnant and yeah. I was with you guys in Nashville. And I said, I've got the name. I'm like, it's Clyde Lion Haas. And she goes, I don't like it instantly. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, I'm pretty sure like that's what we're going to go with. But like, I totally respect like you don't, you do not have to like it and you don't have to pretend to like it later. And she's like, let me think about it. And then she said, I like a good, strong name. Like, what did she come up with? It was like Fred or like, yeah, John. Like George. And I'm like, yeah, I'm no. Jewish. I can't have a kid named John. <laughs> that's weird. It doesn't get more goyim than that. It's awful. Yeah. Robin wanted to name me Smithson and my nickname would have been Smitty. And my dad was like, shut it down. Cause he's like Smithson McMahon sounds like a law firm. He's like, Robin, you're horrible at picking names. Yeah. It does sound like a very strong law firm. Like it, I would a hundred percent file for a retainer. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. If is, you, that, is that the wrongful lingo? death? Yeah. Or like a, like a wrongful injury suit or something, a personal injury suit, Smithson and McMahon. That's who you oh. call yeah. 1,000 Okay, but wait. We got to get back to JoJo Siwa. Back to JoJo Siwa. Okay, so I was talking to Max. I, Ironically enough, he calls me three days ago, okay? He has his camera set up on a tripod. Mm-hmm. He hits FaceTime and then gets into position in his kitchen to do the karma's a bitch dance. Yeah. So I pick up the phone. He's, like, fully ready to JoJo Siwa. And I go, my mother-in-law died. And he's like, what? And I was like, my mother-in-law <laughs> passed away. And he goes... Well, should I not do the choreography or do should I? <laughs> he had it all queued up, and I was like, "No, finish your dance, and then I'll yeah. tell you what happened." So he <laughs> proceeded to do the dance, and I was like, "What is wrong with me? What is wrong with us? This is like not a normal interaction, but whatever." So uh, Max had a very interesting point of view, and I think it's mm. important to have friends that really like inspire your way of thinking and maybe yeah. change your perspective on things. Yeah, he said. That Jojo Siwa is almost so, so widely annoying and so intentional about this push for karma's a bitch, okay, that maybe it loops back around. We're all so irritated, but we're all kind of doing her press for her. We're all marketing for her. This entire episode, I mean, you're going to stream karma's a bitch. Maybe she's in on the joke and maybe she's a genius and we're not celebrating her enough. No. <clears throat> Heard. <clears throat> digesting regurgitating i disagree (laughs) no as i'm saying it out loud i'm like max is a uh full fraud and he is a gaslighter 
Well, actually, I mean, listen, from a marketing standpoint, yes, genius. The, P- the publicist, the PR team behind this, they really did it. But I definitely think she has drank her own Kool-Aid and believes it. Here is my thing. This is where you, well, s- like that old phrase, the youth is wasted on the young, right? I hate to age myself mm, right now. Mm, but, you know, when beautiful. she gets interviewed and they're like, who would you want to have on a podcast? She's like, maybe one of my exes. That, like jo- I can't. Jojo, you're 20. What, call me when you're 37 and you've had 25 exes and you've been through it. If you didn't go to like a regular four-year college, I can't really relate to it. You know what I mean? I uh, just, you were not there yet. And I know she's lived nine lives because she was a child star, but I just sure. feel like JoJo does not know what she doesn't know yet until she'll know it. Does that make sense? 1,000%. I have a personal problem with her foyer. Mm, yeah. The Seen aesthetic it? of the home. Oh, yeah. She's always doing the dance tutorials in the foyer. It's like a like a rogue mirrored Z Gallery console table that looks like she picked it up at a Sheena Shea garage sale. <laughs> Can I be honest with Do you? you know what I mean? In forty years, a Sheena Shea estate sale would be kind of fire, though. We will be there. We will be there. Absolutely. <laughs> Buying like crystal tufted headboards, etc. Yeah. The foyer is an issue, and um, what about her? The children that she is manifesting freddie eddie and teddy oh the the tattoos that she got i mean as somebody who is pretty much eggless over here i do say (laughs) like good for her and you know i make i make vision boards so i can't get mad at her for writing down her future children's names but i don't think she's taken into consideration if she ever finds a partner who doesn't want to name their kids freddie eddie and teddy you know (laughs) It sounds like a horror film. When you went back to narcissism, I do think, Mm -hmm. I think Jojo is narcissistic. I think that's what we're dealing with here. I, you know what? You could be correct. It's a very myopic, um, Mm -hmm. when she speaks and and her interviews, it's uh, it's very myopic. It's like she doesn't understand uh, the way of the world. Did the eclipse happen? No, no, no. My husband just walked in with his computer. Jeff. Looking like, Jeff, I'm, I'm podcasting with Jackie. Jeff, we're in the middle of something, for can, fuck's can, sake. Hi, Jeff. Jackie said we're, she, he, she can't, he can't hear you. Jackie says we're in the middle of something, for fuck's sake. So if you're here to ask me about a bill thing, I don't have time for it. I've got, I've got to give Jackie also, my attention before the eclipse Tell him happens. to go fuck himself because. You can't scan something while I'm podcasting, Jeff. God you damn it, Jeff. Or you wouldn't do this if she was podcasting with Joe Rogan. <laughs> the disrespect. <laughs> He's not a Rogan guy, but if it was one of the Barstool sports guys, he would be like, oh, silence, <sighs> silence on set. By the uh, way, your fucking husband, mm-hmm. your go fucking ahead. husband recommended, Andrew texted him because he wants to go golfing before the Masters yeah. in Atlanta. And whatever golf course that your fucking husband recommended for seven hundred dollars a pop, I said, Andrew, you could buy me a pair of shoes. That's well, how does Wait a it minute. cost seven hundred per hold person on, hold on. to hold go on. golfing? Wait a minute, Andrew texted Jeff to go golfing, uh-huh. and Jeff uh-huh. wasn't just going to assume and absorb the cost as our guest. No, 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 no. no. They're not okay. golfing together. Oh, Andrew's flying. <clears throat> no, no. Then okay, we would really <laughs> no. Then we could really bully them. No, no, no. Andrew is flying in to Atlanta first, and then going to Augusta. Yes. So he wanted to get around in, and he yes. asked for some recommendation. You guys will mm-hmm. already be in Augusta for the Masters. Okay? That's right. So Andrew said, "Hey Jeff, where's a great course that I could go before I get to Augusta?" Mm-hmm. And the one that Jeff recommended is like three thousand dollars a person. For golf. Um, I will find out what he recommended, but can I tell you when I told Jeff two nights ago, or whenever you told me that Andrew's mom had passed, the first thing Jeff said is, "Oh no, he can't go to the Masters." <laughs> oh, of course, Andrew will be there with a black veil. You think that fucker's not going to the Masters? Wait, he's still going. Of course he oh, is. Oh, Jeff just came in and gave a big thumbs up. Oh, yeah. Okay. He, he said the oh, Ritz. God forbid Andrew doesn't <laughs> golf at the Ritz. I mean, he deserves it now. Obviously, this is like pre-trauma, pre-tragedy. I was very irritated about that. He will, he will still be at the Masters, but he'll have a black veil on. So don't worry. <laughs> Jeff says he loves he will you. Be- <laughs> Love you, Jeff. <laughs> this week's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know what the most annoying question is? Jackie, how are you doing? Well, 
I'm tired. My tits are down to my knees. I've got an eight month old demon seed and a husband that insists on doing yard work that only costs us thousands of dollars every week. It's a lot. It can be easy to spread yourself too thin and ignore your boundaries, especially with social events picking up now that it's spring and the sun is out. Therapy can give you the self-awareness to build a social life that doesn't drain your battery. There's an assumption that you have to have gone through some major trauma, ding, 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 like me to go to therapy, but that is so not true. Therapy is a great tool for anybody and can empower you to be the best version of yourself. If you're thinking of starting therapy, better help is the best place to start. I will tell you personally, therapy seemed very daunting and scary to me and I started with better help and it really just like changed my whole perspective. It was so easy. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire. Better help is going to match you with a licensed therapist. It is truly that easy. It's such a great, great company and I stand by it 5,000%. Also, you're able to switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. It's just like having someone you can reach out to, talk to, and to support you 24-7 from your phone. It's amazing. Visit betterhelp.com slash bitch Bible today to get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash bitch Bible. So, Kelly, do you really think any of your girls are going to surpass Matthew Stafford, Super Bowl champ, as an athlete? I mean, I would have thought so, and then I watched him play basketball, so no. Harsh, Kelly B. I feel like I just tell them what they can do better, you know? When you're tucking in these adorable little girls at night, I hope you're not reminding them that they have a very limited future. (laughs) Uh, But, but Hank, that's honesty, and that's me. Okay, so you're harsh. I'm definitely the sweet, the fluff, if you will. And if you listen to this podcast the morning after with you, Kelly Stafford, and me, Hank Winchester. Hold on, hold on. Fluff like, like marshmallow fluff. You get it, girl. You know, sweet, smooth. You spread it on a sandwich. Delicious. Well, then if you're that, what the hell am I? You are tough. You are tough, old, rotten, sourdough (laughs) bread. Wow, Hank. Wow. Listen, I am just saying this podcast has some real hard truths. You're going to have to deal with it. But overall, we're pretty sweet and enjoyable, too. So true. And let's face it, everyone from the outside looking in thinks I have my stuff together. But I'm just like everyone else. I struggle with parenting. I struggle with marriage. I struggle with carpools. All of it. You're just carpooling in a much nicer car than all of us all are. <laughs> so come have a splash with us. Listen to the Morning After podcast with me, Kelly Stafford, and Hank Winchester. Available wherever you get your podcast. I do love Jeff. I love his Instagram so much. And um, when he did, <laughs> oh my God, when he posted his demolition work in the oh guest bathroom <laughs> or whatever the fuck it was. Can I tell With- you? Montel Jordan, this is how, how we, do we do it. it. I was like, I am going to fly to Atlanta. I have to bully him in person. And then I got to fly home. He's using like a thick bubble font, like a Cosmic Sans Am. Can I oh tell you? Oh my God, always. When he's he like, this po- is how we do it. When he posts laying in bed, he'll p- he won't even zoom in on the TV. So you can't see that we haven't put artwork around our TV. There is no like, like it's just a shit show. There's shit up on our yeah. counter. There's like prescription drugs. The dogs are like yeah. laying out, like labia out. I mean, have some respect for macaroni. And he'll post like watching the Rangers dominate. It, his feet are in the background. Like he's just, it's the most lazy photography, lazy posting. And I'm like, Jeff, some psycho fan is going to screenshot this, zoom in and see that you know, you're on fucking hair growth pills. Like you got to stop posting. You're lazy about it. Either send me the photo and I don't edit shit, but like, stop being so embarrassing on Instagram, please. please. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of amazing though. Like I love his work. Uh, Do you? I'm glad. Yeah. We redid the laundry room. That's been a whole fucking thing because looks good. Wait, but you'll love this. We ordered the wrong fridge. We're doing one of those like Chris Jenner clear, like just like mm. chef fridges, right? It just has mm. it just has like shelves, right? There's no drawers. It's just the drink fridge. We order Cute. it. The wrong one comes. It says pharmacy all over it. It's a pharmaceutical storage fridge. We can't return. Well, that it. works for you. It does work for me. But the company literally went under. So we try and return it. A day later, they're under. They're bankrupt. So now we have a pharmaceutical fridge in our garage because it stays oh lit God. up. It's like the one that you'd find at CVS that you store all the yeah. drugs in. So now, yeah. we ha- if anybody has Ozempic, fertility drugs, anything that they need to keep cool, it, you can keep it cool in our garage. And every oh my God, time, probiotics, breast yeah. milk, your trazodone, anything. 
So every time we open the garage right now, it's just this giant glowing orb of a pharmaceutical fridge just staring at you. And Jeff parks his Z71 right in front of it. And I'm like, oh, Hell the yeah. mistakes we have made. <laughs> Are you going to like merchandise that fridge with medications and supplements? I think we're going to have to. Or are we going to try to fit drinks in there? I don't know what we're going to do because with the other fridge hasn't come for the laundry room yet. But that was just going to be a liquid fridge. So, I, I mean, we have so many deep freezers. You would think that I, I am running, <clears throat> you know, a, a, a soup kitchen at my home, but I am not. So I don't give back. I just eat a lot. Oh, yeah. Wow. But That's Jojo great. Siwa, That's... back to Jojo, it's just, um, it's insufferable. I want to sit her down. Is. I want to sit her down like a, like a wise aunt and be like, okay, girlfriend, I love that you're finding yeah. yourself. I love that this is exploratory for you right now, but just shut the fuck up for a week. Just shut up for a week. <sighs> just one week. I feel like I was talking to Andrew about this. I would like to start offering um, like Zoom therapy mm. for just the masses. Um, I'm thinking like 1500 an hour. I agree. At least. Don't you think at least maybe 2000 just because I don't want it to be like a real source of income. I just would like to alienate a lot of psychopaths. Yeah. But I feel like some people just need to be like very diligently and very lightly. I w- I don't want to say bullied mm-hmm. because that's the big B word. It's 2024 and we just don't talk like that on this podcast. God forbid. But I would like to say maybe just like reprimanded. Uh-huh. Or like maybe infused with a bit of self awareness. Maybe it's and not maybe- even. I wouldn't call it therapy. I would call it life coaching. I think life Let's coaching with Jackie because that's more of a positive spin. Therapy can be intimidating for people who aren't willing to look in the mirror and think that they have anything to therapize about. But if you say coaching, they don't want to do the work, they don't want to do the work. But if you say coaching, it's all in a positive spin. Come on, you know how to spin it. And we could do like some type of a workbook, like yeah. a work. Yeah, like, you know, with prompts so you could really look inward. I've had to do a lot of looking inward. You know what I realize that I do every week on this podcast, which is so fucking embarrassing? I always say, like, oh, TikTok's going to light me up. TikTok's going (laughs) to rip my ass apart. I have no presence on TikTok, so that's just a a dream and a goal. Because I have no traction on TikTok. And I'm, you know, once I remove myself out of my body, I can look at that scenario and be like Jackie that's embarrassing I have a presence on TikTok and when I tell you the the comments are just so um it's a roller coaster of emotion it's you know your core fans that find you and they get it and they're in on the joke and then it's one it's no it's not one it's multiple dudes just being like she needs to get her neck done so it's a real it's a real struggle Mm mm-hmm yeah. yeah, it really is. But like, I just have none of that, none of the above. So it's, it's a joke when I say that because it's just not, it's not slapping. Jackie, I feel like we're both very self-aware people, but I think it also mm-hmm. is to our uh, detriment because I'm so mm-hmm. self-aware that there are times where I let things slide that like other people's behavior, like, like a Jojo Siwa, I let it slide because I'm like, I made a goal this year that I wasn't going to try and fix people's problems because I'm a fixer. I am. I'm self-aware. I know what's going on. I can look inward, but I try and fix. And this year I said, I'm only going to help people who come to me and ask for it. I cannot do unsolicited advice because it's, it's That's killing. evolved. It's evolved. Yep. It's evolved. I have a question for you. Speaking of mm-hmm. fixing, um, now that you're a full blown red carpet correspondent, which yeah. I mean, could you die? <laughs> It's amazing. It's like my favorite thing ever. It's you've literally reinvigorated the red carpet experience because it was dying. It was on its last leg. I went soft. I I eased in. You know, I just went in with the tip. But next season, you're smart. Next season, we're going full throttle. We're it's just just you're going to feel the balls deep. Hitting you on, balls deep. Yeah, yeah. In the spirit of that. I would like to ask you who you think is the worst dressed celebrity of all time. Of all time. Or just currently. And by the way, you don't have to be married to any idea. We can conveniently when you go back on the red carpet, you can pretend like this never happened and be like, I was just kidding. 
I mean said it. it out loud and it was kind of like people were, I, I did get nervous after I said it because they like, you know, nowadays with the red carpet stuff, at least if I'm chiming in on fashion, they don't want you to actually say like what you think it's, everything's got to be positive. But I was pissed. I still think Billie Eilish is so stunning. And I was like, why are we wearing these like frumpy oversized men's golf shirts? And then she wore right. a sock with the heel to the Oscars. It, it made me enraged. Not th- okay. Yeah. If you want to be a tomboy, lean into the tomboy, but we can't put, in sure. a fabulous gorgeous tuxedo suit i hate it i think she i think she has so much potential and it angers me that she wears the same jinko jeans and an oversized polo it, it really irks that's me. fair what do you totally think? fair okay carrie underwood mm. why like what why? the fuck is going on i need you to google when we're done okay. with this, okay? You want me to do it right the now? The CMT Awards, you do it right now. The CMT Awards were last night, okay? She performed kind of a low-budge, pink-adjacent aerial number. Okay. And I actually didn't watch it. I'm just assuming. Okay. <laughs> okay. She wore a one-legged um, Blades of Glory Ice Capades Lavender Unitard Bedazzled that when I saw it, I... I wanted to th- come on. Come on. <clears throat> Heather, yeah, come on. This is this bad. Is a, this is it's bad. It's always bad. She never nails it. You know what I hate? And this isn't of the times to say, I hate when pretty skinny people mm-hmm. fuck it up with the outfit. You've got everything going for you. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to say that. If you've got a body... Like, whoa, okay, uh-huh. and a face and a weave and all of the things working for you. And mind you, access, how do you fuck it up so hard? Are you trying to do that to be relatable? Like so, Heidi Klum, how yeah. do you fuck it up every time? You're Heidi goddamn Klum. Camila Cabello, what are you doing? Oh, What's God, going ca- on? The Camila Cabello with the blonde hair, it's a tragedy. I agree with you. And as a as a bitter full figure woman, my options are so limited. I always say if I had the body, it would I would be I, you couldn't stop me. That is the one thing that is holding me back is the 200 pound weight gain. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, if I, I had, have a bit of a midsection and, t- and tits that are going down to my knees. But if I was Kendall yeah. Jenner, I would be wearing oh. like little. Oh, my God. I'd I wear would a doily. be wearing everything. I'd wear those yes. little cupcake wrappers as as a bodysuit, and that would be it. You would see everything. You'd see all my bits. My labia would be out. I would Ugh. show you all of it all the time because I agree with you. If you're thin and naturally pretty, you can't fuck it up. And if you're fucking it up, we're angry at you. The, the everyday woman is furious. Right, because honestly, in, in the realm of feminism – I'm rooting for those bitches. I Me want too. them to knock it out of the park. I really mm-hmm. do. I don't want to sit here behind a mic looking like Temple Grandin talking shit about Carrie Underwood. I want her to be glowing and delicious and gorgeous, suspended from the CMT Awards ceiling. But instead, she looks like she's in the fucking mass Singer dressed as gay reptar. Also, I'm done with the aerial performances by female pop stars. Pink, we get it. You can fly through the sky. You know what I mean? I, I, I think with the Olympics coming up, we need to let the professionals, like Simone Biles, we need to let them do the twirling. And the fact that Carrie yeah. Underwood and Pink are always w- whirling and twirling in the air, it's enough. Stand with your feet, plant it on the ground. You know, maybe you bring roller skates into the mix, okay? I don't know. Like Usher did. Like Usher. I sure did. But I don't need to see you high in the sky doing twirls on some silk fabric from Joanne's Fabric. It's enough. Wrap it up. It gives me kind of like um, vertigo by proxy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like I just, I don't, it's a lot. It's too much for me. And I worry about her up there. I worry about all of them. And I, you know, I just, yeah. it's enough. It's funny when I was just in Australia. So um, Australia loves pink. Loves her. She had like oh. 65 nights in a row sold out stadium tour while wow. Taylor Swift is also there. And I'm like, Pink is, I love, I have respect for Pink, but she's not as big in the States. You know, like, right. like, I mean, I think like we like her, but I, in Australia, they fucking love her. And of course, you I'm couldn't follow- finagle that Eras mm-hmm. tour ticket, could you? No, I couldn't finagle the Eras tour ticket. And I thought I was going to get it's it, but I didn't. Up. Yeah. I really and thought s- you were too. And instead, my the last night of my 
Sydney adventure. I'd been in Australia for a month. My husband made me climb the Sydney Bridge. And it just says, you don't like birds. Jackie, I don't like outdoor heights. And I was suspended uh, thousands of feet in the air on a bridge being held together with a fishing wire. And I had a nervous breakdown on the bridge. Uh huh. And when we got off the bridge, Jeff said, oh, I thought you were bullshitting. I didn't realize you actually didn't like a, like outdoor heights. And wow. he, That's he went two to, strikes against Jeff. And he went to give me a hug. And I was three, silent, really three. And I was silent and cold. And I go, please don't touch me right now. And then he was like, you don't have to be a bitch. Like went, went there. And I walked home in silence back to our gorgeous, stunning five star <laughs> hotel. And I went into the bar by myself and I got a drink yeah. and I said, I walked into the bar and I had like the shakes and they're like, are you okay? I go, I just got off the Sydney fucking Harbor bridge. I need a white wine. I was panicked. I was fully panicked. It was awful. Wow. And yet Mm -hmm. again, we bring it back home. We've come full circle, detached, glazed. You didn't get out of a moving vehicle, but you walked off a bridge. (laughs) I walked (laughs) off a bridge. And if you don't think I, I had intrusive thoughts while being on that, the top of that bridge. What if I just, just jump over to prove a point a little, to Jeff. A kickball change and a leap. <laughs> a little <laughs> pivot turn off the bridge just so that Jeff then gets framed for murder, even though it was my yes. own doing. That Those are the intrusive thoughts that I have. Wow. That's, um, this, we learned a lot here today. <laughs> we Life did. lessons. Life Thank lessons. Thank you so much, Heather. Jackie. You really I, came through. I love you. Um, I hope the the new windows turn out great in your in your house. Yeah. Um, and you. you know, I hope we both survive the eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'm going to end this episode, and we're, it's just going to be just black, black, just black. I love you. Thank you. I love follow you. her at Heather McMahon. You already follow her. Listen to her podcast. Absolutely not with Heather McMahon. Check her out on Netflix. Check her out on fucking tour. Whatever. Heatherontour.com. Right. Yeah, Heatherontour.com. Yeah. You're welcome. Love, love you. Love you.